so if you've been watching my videos for a little bit, first of all, thank you, but you've also probably noticed that each one has something very much in common. The beginning and end of each video has gameplay from an unspecified fan game. Yeah, that one's mine, actually. So this video is going to be a bit different, as I can't exactly review my own work in a fair way. But I will be showcasing the game's features for new players, as well as new content for returning ones. My name is Avery, and this is Project Vanguard. Alright, so I guess I have to start this video with probably the biggest feature this game has to offer, and that's the regional variants. Project Vanguard takes the mods you know and love, and gives them a brand new identity. Some stay kind of similar, just gaining a new type, while others can go completely off the deep end, in a good way. A lot of time has been spent to make sure every regional feels at the very least viable in the normal difficulty mode. Even outside of the regional forms and Fakemon, a lot of mons have received edits allowing them to be on par with the new ones. At the beginning of your adventure, you'll have the option between 28 starters, about half of them being regional variants. I know this is probably a really daunting and overwhelming choice, but don't worry, about halfway through the available content, you'll be able to start acquiring more. If you're a returning player wondering where Eevee went, it's actually been moved to an unmissable side quest at the start of the game. That way, players can have their regional starter and Eevee. Speaking of Eevee, there are in fact 19 Eevee Lucians available. The regionals are pretty fairly spread throughout the region, with some being simple grass encounters and others being side quests. But I have a lot to talk about, so I'm not going to spoil anything else about the new forms, and instead tell you a little bit about the story. So while the regional variants were handled almost entirely by other developers, the story is actually written by me, myself, and I. After a short introductory cutscene, you awaken in the house of a random girl who claims to have found you unconscious. You soon realize all of your memories except for your name are gone, but before you have the time to process anything else, she runs off screaming that she'll be late for something. After picking your starter and dealing with some enemies, you're invited to the Vanguard Academy, a prestigious school for aspiring Pokemon trainers. With nowhere else to go, you of course accept this offer and begin your story. It's kind of hard for me as a writer to give my opinions on my own work, but if I had to give myself credit anywhere, I'd put it in two places. First, I think I did a good job crafting a story that felt a lot different than your ordinary Pokemon one. You aren't trying to defeat 8 gym leaders, become the champion, or complete the Pokedex. You're just trying to figure out who you are and become stronger to make the mystery easier to solve. Secondly, I think I did a good job making sure every important character had a place and moment in the story. Even your player character has a voice and personality, and isn't just a soulless vessel like they normally are. Next, I wanted to quickly go over the difficulty and game modes. In Project Vanguard, there are three difficulty options, Casual, Normal, and Expert. Normal mode I'd say is a bit harder than your average Pokemon experience, while Expert mode was designed to bring out the full potential of the regional variants and Fakemon. In Expert mode, you'll be forced to constantly switch up your team to handle the upcoming challenges, while in Normal mode, I think it'd be pretty safe to say that you can just beat it using whatever Pokemon you want. Casual mode is a bit weird though. I honestly didn't want to spend time making and consistently balancing a third difficulty mode, but I wanted the game to be accessible to casual players who just wanted to explore the region and experience the story without getting gatekept by bosses. So casual mode kind of just sets every opposing Pokemon's IVs and EVs to zero. If you don't know what that means, basically you'll pretty much always be faster, stronger, and bulkier than your opponent. As for the game modes, double battle mode obviously makes every battle a double battle. At the beginning of your adventure, you can also choose if you would like to do a monotype challenge, which only allows you to use one type of Pokemon for the whole game. There's even a guide that shows you what Pokemon are available during each chapter. If you're worried about certain monotypes being boring, then don't be. You'll be able to obtain a unique team of six before the first major boss, no matter which type you pick. If all of these options seem overwhelming or conflicting, then again, don't worry. You can raise or lower your difficulty, enable and disable double battle only mode, and disable the monotype challenge at any PC.
In Project Vanguard, you'll find a plethora of side content to complete if you want to take a break from the main story or if you just want to make your team a bit stronger. These range from dens where you can challenge a powerful opponent and receive a weaker version after winning, or even super fans of old gym leaders who use a similar team as them. Completing these tasks will reward you with trainer points which can be exchanged at various shops for items and regional variants and Trainer Score, which can be redeemed for unique rewards like TMs and even more regional variants. As for quality of life, yeah, this game's pretty jam-packed with it. First of all, IV and EV training is no longer a thing you need to do. EVs can be allocated in the stat menu, and IVs can be increased using vitamins which can be found in item balls or purchased from various stores. When you first catch or obtain a Mon, you can select their ability, hidden power type, and nature. EXP candies can also be purchased at various stores. If that still isn't enough, at the very beginning of the game, you receive an infinite repel that can be enabled or disabled at any time. I added all of these features because when I play a video game, I want to spend my time exploring and playing through the story. But I'm going to stop things here because I want you all to experience most of this game firsthand, rather than from a video. There are a ton of features, content, and even surprises I didn't even begin to cover. So if you enjoyed this video, not only do I hope you subscribe, but I also hope you go and check the game out. I'd also like to thank my incredible development team, especially my lead artist, balancer, and programmer for helping me bring this experience alive. I hope you all have a nice day, and goodbye!